Okay, so let's talk a little bit about center of mass. Um, we all know a little bit about center of mass. It's sort of the balance point of an object, uh, and it's what we can use to treat as, as the point, because now we're, we've been dealing with objects that we've been treating as just one dot, and now we have to deal with the real world, world objects, so we're adding back some dimensionality in there. So we'll start with this question. Um, remember, we are gonna vote, and this is the time, so pause. Okay, the answer is A, and the reason for that is because over here, we have a much bigger mass. We're assuming that this, uh, these things are the same material, so more mass is over here than over here, so that means the center of mass should be closer to the big thing rather than the small thing. Let's try another one. So using the same reasoning as our previous one, um, we can say that we know that because the balance point is over here, this mass should be bigger than this mass. So the definition of center of mass is the point about an which an object will freely rotate. So for instance, if you have something like an X um, or, or the point where, so like if you have something like an X, it would rotate around somewhere like here. Um, if you threw it, and if you have, or it's also where something would balance like a seesaw. So this point, if this were a uniform object, then we would expect the balance to happen somewhere near the middle. Um, so if we think about this in terms of mathematical stuff, we're going to define this point as the center of mass, which we'll call XCM. Um, and we can set up a situation where we create our... Um, coordinate system, we'll call this zero, uh, and then this will be the distance to our first mass, we'll call x1, the distance to our second mass, we'll call x2, and the distance to our center of mass from zero, we'll call x center of mass. You can choose your own zero, like you can call this point zero, but then we would have x1 and x2 as these different lengths. So it just matters where you call, you have to pick your own coordinate system like we've been doing. You figure out what axis you're using and then you set a zero. Okay. All right. So the way that we figure out the center of mass, right, we've defined all these objects with respect to our zero. So we always have to pick a zero and we set up this sum. So basically we sum up this distance times this mass that's here, then this distance times this mass that's here, and then we sum up all the masses along the bottom, okay? And the way that we write this out in math is with a summation. So this is one over, this is the total mass, and it's the sum of all the distances times the mass, the masses. So the distance to that mass from zero times its mass. Um, because this can be done in two dimensions, there's an X and a Y version of this. You could also have a Z version of this, but this is our definition of how you figure out center of mass. And this is for, obviously for discrete objects, um, it gets a little bit more complicated to find the center of mass of an individual object, uh, that has lots and lots of little pieces. And then we can make that probably an integral, but to start out with, um, let's try this problem. Okay, so here we have a center of mass problem we're gonna try out. Um, so we're gonna start by drawing this meter stick. Oh no, that went poorly. So here's a meter stick and um, we're gonna put a mass. So we'll call this zero, we'll call this 50, and we'll call this 100 centimeters, right? Um, so that means this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, maybe not to scale. <laughs> 10, 20, 30, 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 120, 30, 40, That means we are going to have a mass at the 20 and another one at the 80. 
this is 200 grams and this is 100 grams so we'll call this mass one and this is mass two um, then the center of mass of the meter stick is where the um, 90 grams will act because the meter stick actually has its own center of mass and then we want to know um, the center of mass for the entire system. So the center of mass for the entire system, we can guess where it's going to go. We're going to guess it's going to go somewhere um, to the right of the center because this is bigger than this. So we'll probably pick some place, you know, in this area. Okay, so that's probably where our center of mass is going to be, just making an estimate. And the way that we're gonna calculate our center of mass is using our center of mass formula. Now we know that we only have the x direction here. We'll call this the x-axis, right? So here we have the x-axis. The main thing we wanna remember is we picked this part to be zero, okay? So we're gonna measure all of our distances from zero, which means this distance, x1 is equal to 0.2 meters. This distance, which we'll call x center of mass, is equal to 0 0.5 meters. That's 50 centimeters, right? That's to the center of mass of the meter stick. And then this distance, which we call x2, is equal to 80 centimeters or 0.8 meters. Okay, so our x center of mass is one over the total mass sum of x m, okay? Which means this is one over the total mass, so the total mass is going to be 100, oops, sorry, we'll do this in kilograms. So 0.1 plus 0.2 plus 0 0.09 kilograms, okay? And then we have um, 0 0.2, meters, that's x, times m1, which is 0.1 kilograms, plus 0 0.5 meters times 0 0.09 kilograms, so this is the mass of the center of mass of the meter stick times its distance, plus um, 0 0.8 meters times 0 0.2 kilograms, okay? So remember, total mass, and then all of these are mass times distance from zero. When you sum all of that up, you get 57.7 centimeters, which should correspond to this area that we picked as where we thought the center of mass should be, so that's gonna be somewhere right here. Okay, so this is our center of mass for the system. Now, just as a side note, you can do this if you, the, it, obviously it's a meter stick, so we picked zero to be zero, but you can do this same thing by picking your center of mass to be at the center. So here, let me just show you what I mean. We're gonna take this whole thing We're gonna copy it. Oops. And we're gonna bring it down here. Mm -mm. Better. Okay, so getting rid of this. Um, Let's assume that we pick a different coordinate system. So let's say we call this zero, and now this is 50, and this is negative 50. So this is our new system of measurement, okay? That means that our x1 is equal to 30 centimeters, and then x2 is also equal to 30 centimeters, okay? 
Um, actually, x1 is equal to negative 30 centimeters because it's going in the other direction from zero. So if we want to do our x center of mass, we still have one over our total mass, which is 100 grams. Uh, so we call that 0.1 kilograms plus 0.2 kilograms plus 0.09 kilograms. And then we sum up all of our x times m. So first x1, that's going to be negative 0.5 meters times 0.01 Oops, zero, sorry, 0 0.1 kilograms plus zero because, look, this is now at zero plus 0 0.5 meters times 0 0.2 kilograms. Turns out when you sum this up, you still get 57.7 .7 centimeters or what we would get is 0 0.577 meters. Um, I'm just converting to something that's easier. And so it still works. This situation, one over total mass x i, summing up all of the x times m divided by the total mass always works as long as you pick your zero and stick with it. Okay. So we've talked about how we can find the center of mass of a bunch of objects, but what if we just want to find the center of mass of one object? Well, what we do is we break the object into little tiny pieces. And then, because there's so many little tiny pieces, if we want it to be a continuous object, we can make each little tiny piece infinitesimally small, and we can sum them all up. But if you make the pieces really small, now this becomes an integral. Um, the tricky thing here is dm. This is the derivative, like sort of the... the not the derivative, but it's the um, infinitesimally small piece of mass. So one of these little guys, okay? Um, the thing about this is it has to be rewritten in terms of x, and this would have to be rewritten in terms of y. Uh, and so here we're going to use something we might remember from previous parts of the class called density. So remember, you can only integrate over coordinates, so integrating over dm doesn't work, so we have to convert dm to dx or dy or dz or dr or d theta or whatever coordinate system we're using um, and then move forward from there. So this is our full definition of our center of mass for any object. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you how we can use this to actually calculate the center of mass of a thin uniform rod. Okay. So let's figure out how we fig get the uh, center of mass of a thin uniform rod of length L. So let's draw this out. So first we have to have our rod. Uh, so this is a thin uniform rod of length L and we'll fill it in. Okay. So this thing has a length L. We want to draw our coordinate system. So let's say we have an XY coordinate system. So that would be Y. But we don't really need that. We just need X. Okay. So we're going to call this 0. And then this will be L. So 0 to L. Let's move the 0 over. So 0 to L. Well, our definition of the center of mass is x center of mass is equal to 1 over m, the mass total, right? And we already know the mass total is m, um, of x dm. So let's talk about what dm means, okay? So in this case, dm is like a little chunk of this guy right here. But that means dm has a length we'll call dx, okay? And the reality is if you split this thing into a bunch of little pieces, there's just a bunch of little dms here, and it's broken up into lots of little chunks that are all of size dm, okay? But the key here is that um, dm has to turn into dx. So how do we figure out how much mass is in this little thing because all we really know is that we have this big mass m and we have a length l so let's go to something we call linear density 
Um, and linear density is just like density, but instead of mass over volume, it's just mass over length. So we'll call the linear density mass over the total length, okay? So this is our density, which means that if we know how long something is, we can multiply it by density, because remember, density is mass over length. So if we want to figure out um, the actual mass of something, then our mass, any mass, like dm, is going to be lambda dx. So the density times the length, right? So that gives us dm. So since we know that lambda is m over l in this case, because we have a uniform density, right? Uniform rod means uniform density. We end up with m over l dx. That's our dm. So when we write this in, we have 1 over m, we, and x, we replace dm with m over l dx, where m over l we know to be constant, so we can pull those out, okay? Um, the other thing we know is we're integrating this from 0, right? We're integrating the whole rod, so we integrate from 0 all the way to l, right? So we're adding up this piece. So the length to this piece and its mass, then the length to this piece and its mass, then the length to this piece and its mass, then the length to this piece and its mass. The x represents this length, and the, this represents the mass, okay? So we cancel this. You end up with 1 over L from 0 to L x dx. All right, so let's plug this in. We have 1 over L 1 half x squared from 0 to L. Um, so that gives us 1 over L times 1 half L squared minus 0, right, squared. So we get 1 over L, L squared times 1 half. Get rid of one of those, and you get L over 2. So your center of mass is at the halfway point which we should have guessed since this is a uniform rod. Remember, a uniform rod like this is going to have a center of mass at the center. Now we have derived that. So just thinking about collisions and what center of mass means, um, explosions are sort of reverse inelastic collisions because remember an inelastic collision is objects colliding and then sticking together. An explosion is now one object that splits into multiple objects. So, so we can think about this in terms of recoil um, and using these values we can figure out what the force and acceleration of things should be. Um, so for many particles, right, we can just add up all of the, the momentums and they should all add up to zero. So for instance, if it's, if it's an explosion, the initial momentum is probably something like zero, and then each of the pieces is going to have momentums that add up to zero. 